This was our first time ever to this area. We were prepared for a hard hunt, rough country, and maybe a long walk. But on the other end, with that in mind, we knew that if we got back away from the lake, there was a good chance we were going to find some good moose. So, that's why, of course, that's what we were looking for. We didn't really look for, look at the, the long log it would be. We just wanted to get back and see if we could find some big bull moose that we'd never seen before. So it was a it was, it was a trip we were really looking forward to. Okay, we made it to the shore finally. Got the motor working. We had trouble with the motor. We're a little real late getting in there. It's the first time we've ever stepped on this ground. But I don't think it's gonna be the last. But look at this, this is gorgeous. Now we're going crazy enough to take a chance. I'm going to try to walk in there. It's two and a half miles of this crow flies. The brook got too shallow, so I had to get into the brook and start walking on by the shore. I said it was only a two and a half mile walk. Well, maybe it was, but it was really rough ground and as we walked, we had to, of course, look as we went, but uh, the time just wouldn't dare to get back to the distance we wanted to go. And as we walked in, we seen a few moose, a couple cows, but not a lot of sign like we expected. We picked up a, a real nice shed. Uh, it had 11 points on one side, so we knew that there was some big moose in there somewhere, even though the, the rack was wasn't real new. But we kept on going until well, we had to turn, I had to soon turn and go back because the, the time just wasn't there. We didn't want to be caught in there in the dark. And as we looked in, up in the side of a ridge, there was the monsters. So, <laughs> problem was, it was just too late. We couldn't, we couldn't go after them. It was just uh, too late today. So, we knew where we had to go. So, we head back and decided the next morning, it, any luck at all without any motor troubles like we had this morning, that we'd be able to get back. We knew right where to go now, so we didn't think they were going to be gone far from where we seen them that evening. So just the plan, go back the next morning and then uh, see if we can get close to them, see how big they really were. Okay, here we are. Day is done. Saving gas. Saving gas. <laughs> Drifting out the river. River rafting. Had a pretty good day. How much is he? 29 to be exact. 29 moose. Didn't make the 30th one. See some big, big bulls, but it's just too far. So, bright and early the next morning, we headed back in again and uh, we passed on by this gorgeous waterfalls. And I just had to stop and take a video. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, this is where the fun began. Uh, we have never, ever put this much work in to try and get close to a moose, but. We had our mind made up that we was going to conquer this ridge and get within, well, at least rifle shot of, of the moose that we seen the evening before. But uh, it was just a lot of work, but I think it was worth every every step we made. Yes, this is as steep as it looks. Uh, a couple of times we kind of questioned if we was going to be able to get in over the top from then the bottom. We could tell for sure, but uh, as we got closer, we found a little tiny <laughs> goat trail, I guess to get up over and uh, made it in over the top. Whatever it takes. Okay, we made it over the first mountain. Now, the big one comes, which is not real far away, but it's kind of a little higher. <laughs> a little higher, but just look what we see. Is four monsters laid down together. I'll zoom in on them. Not real clear, but you'll get a rough idea what we're looking for. That's four bulls there together. Not now clear you can see it, but look, the knockers is four big bulls laid down together. We made a quick plan of how to get closer to these moose and but an hour later, we were in shot of them. Watch this.
I wish I could describe to you the feeling I got just knowing that these moose were just over the hill there from us. They were absolute monsters, or they looked like from a distance. And they have Danny in front of me, and I was just dying to see for myself. And did he finally see them? Man, <laughs> it was just like Christmas morning when I was maybe 10 years old. You might have heard y'all to believe this, but none of them was what we wanted. We wanted something bigger than this, and we couldn't believe it. So uh, we decided to uh, at least walk on past them and then to get them to stand off anyway and get some good video. But it was pretty exciting getting up close to them, but no, it wasn't what we were looking for. As we got closer, of course, they all stood up. Well, what a picture. Unreal, it's beautiful. You don't see this every day. Four monster bulls all bedded down together. Yeah, it was something we'll never forget. They all seemed like they were just froze, not sure what to do. One was just waiting for the other one to make a move to, to go for safety, but it seemed like that they weren't sure where to go. You might be asking what in the world are we looking for? Well, we've killed moose, uh, you know, 18, 18 to 22 points. But we wanted something, you know, 25 plus. That's what we were hoping for. But all these were ranged from, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 points like that. And you know, we just let it walk away. But, you know, honestly, the satisfaction was still there. We had them beat. You know, we could have killed either one of them we wanted to. So, we just beat the moose at their own game. And, uh, and uh, well, we just let them walk away and uh, enjoyed every moment of it. We were still quite a ways away from where we seen the moose uh, the evening before, so we still had confidence that the ones we seen was bigger, and uh, we haven't seen them yet, so we continued on. It was starting to get a race against time now, because uh, there's only so much daily in the day, so. But we conquered this big ridge. When we looked over the other side, sure enough, here was the tree that we seen the evening before. Watch this. But would you believe it? The biggest one there was 22 points. So, like before, we let these walk away as well. Took some video and uh, kept looking for some more moose. Our oats began to fade because, I mean, there's only so many moose in a certain area. So time was against us and uh, we had to go back. So as we as we turned to leave to go back toward to our boat, we made a little bit of a circle. And as we come over the top of it, one more little hill, here was, I was going to say how many, but I'll just let you guys count. There was racks everywhere, and we were sure this time there was going to be one there, at least one over, you know, 25 points, but watch this. Here was seven, seven moose, and not only seven moose, but every one of them was bulls. And I think it was three or four of them was you know big trophy bulls but still again here we go like this mirror 19 points nice points big brew no points we call it but still none making the 25 marker except for one more one here you'll see her shortly when we noticed that he had one side gun he had 13 points on one side so i guess he was the king but uh, so late in the year that the big ones was losing her antlers you know so it was just uh, <laughs> unlucky for us but lucky for him because we would have took that one it was a good chance that he was a 26 or 27 point bull but this one here 
There's another one with his antlers gone. He, he wasn't so big, but he's still a great bull, but just one side. We made up our mind that we weren't gonna shoot anything, so we just sat back and enjoyed the time that we had left. Cause soon we had to head back toward the boat because we, we had at least a two hour walk to get back. But we just had to sit around and watch for a while anyway, just to take in the, in the chance of seeing this. Seven bulls together, it don't happen every day. It was absolutely beautiful. Danny decided to walk over to the left of him and look down over a, a little hill there. And as he did, they spotted him and uh, began to run away, of course. And a couple coming straight toward me and the other ones went up over the ridge. <laughs> it was incredible to watch them all travel up over the ridge, just going to the hey. more as if it didn't mean anything to them. They can get around so good. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, how many points? Oh, boy. Wonderful. Well, anyway, we made our way back to the boat. Whatever we got it takes. back there uh, at just as it got dark. We got a big fire going and uh, sat there around the fire and uh, just pondered over and talked about the awesome day we had. Something we never seen before. That many moose in one place it was absolutely incredible. And so many bulls. It was just uh, undescribable. I'll never forget it. And uh, as long as it lives, it'll be a day that we'll cherish for, for a long time. Our second attempt uh, to get Danny's moose, but. Uh, we have lowered our high expectations that we set of 25 points down to anything over 20 points. I think we'll be happy with that. Uh, but uh, we got a friend come along with us this time, Daniel Robinson. He also got a moose license. And he's going to be happy with anything over 20 points. So this should be a good trip. Uh, it's going to be a hard walk, hard uphill battle again. But... Uh, we knew that before we started that was going to be a struggle, but it was what we wanted to do, and uh, we were really looking forward to this trip as well. Okay, this is our first break, break time after walking four or five hundred yards. <laughs> we're tired already. I want to see those, see so what these fellas use for for guns and uh, some pretty looking guns you got there. We use Daniel. Tika 270 Winchester Short Magnum. What's this fellow using? STW. Stand him up and we'll knock him nice. <laughs> Let's go. That was actually my rifle here that Danny had. Uh, a entry from Ontario, Mark Miltra gave me as a tip. Just like the first day that me and Danny was off, we knew we had to get way back in the country and uh, find where the moose were. It was late in the year and it seemed like they were gathering 
to their winter grounds. So this wouldn't be an easy walk either. It took us an hour and 45 minutes just to get back to where we wanted to go. And finally, when we got there, we seen some tracks and all of a sudden, uh, Daniel looked down across a, a big open area and sure enough. She's a bowl there now. She's 20, 21, 22 points. I'm trying to get out a little bit closer on and try to get a bit better look. What's your, big, what's your biggest one ever? Biggest bowl for me so far is 16 pointers. So if I can get something 21, 22 points, I think I'll have it. All right, let's just go and try to get a better look. For all who watched my Yukon DVDs, you should recognize this guy, Daniel Robinson. He's with me. Uh, three years in the Yukon. This guy knows what he's doing, and he's not only a Newfie in the Yukon, he's a Newfie in Newfoundland. Right at heart, and uh, he's an excellent hunter. It was still early in the day, just started, and uh, it was actually the first moose we seen, so we gambled and uh, Daniel decided to pass on him, let him walk away. We decided to split up and uh, just to cover more area, and I went my own way and uh, we decided to meet back up again within an hour's time. And I didn't go no more than 20 minutes since I left Annie and them, and here was two bulls. One was a monster. I couldn't tell for sure exactly how many points. But I could see three and three for cutters. So he looked like a good one. The luck was on our side. He bed it down while, while I was watching him. So I knew now was a good chance he was there for the day. I took my time, went back and found Danny and them, and let them decide what they were going to do. As I got back to where I was supposed to meet Danny and them, something caught my attention over on the next ridge. And when I looked, there was two nice bulls. And little did I know, but Daniel was on the other side and had plenty of time to take him if they wanted to, but they let them walk away as well. By the time we got back to where I seen that big bull, he was standing up and walked maybe 100 yards into some Tuckamore. Not giving us any chance to shoot, he gave us plenty of time to try to figure out what he was going to do. Well, Danny decided that he had enough, enough of this walking, and uh, we knew it was late in the year, and most of the big bulls had their antlers gone, so we wouldn't take any more chances. So if the bull would step in open, he was gonna try and take him. You might notice that we only had this small window, that's it. And uh, once he crossed here, that, that I don't think we're gonna see him anymore because the forest was just too high. So it's the only chance he had now when he crosses here. It was now or never. It looked like a good uh, good shot by the reaction of the moose, but we just couldn't tell, so we had to take our time and sneak down there and open that he wouldn't gone too far. Beautiful. Tiny boss. That's big. 
That's big. Snazzy boards, that is, buddy. Huh? Sure. Like like <laughs> Go ahead, count points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. What's wrong with that? Oh boy. Boy, that's a big animal. Yeah. But I tell you, if he's not on that 60 line border, you know what around it. Right, Jasper, spread to work. And that's it, boy. Some folks got to work. Despite the fact that this hunt was one of our best ever, the ending could have been much better. After we took a bunch of pictures, we cleaned and prepared the meat. We carried it on our backs for hours. Once we got to our truck, we drove to a friend's house at a nearby town. And for, and for the sake of the good people that live there, I won't even mention the name of the town. Just after dark, someone stole the antlers out of our truck. Yeah, stole the antlers and left the meat. So I'd just like to say to the person who stole them, you may have took our, took our antlers, but you never got our memories. I'm sure they'll be around much longer than you'll ever be. I can go on and on with a list of crude words that describe you, but it's okay. You'll get your reward someday. The only fellow I'm really missing her now is Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell is a good friend of ours. He really enjoys this extreme moose hunts. And uh, <laughs> I like playing a joke on him every now and then. Team Daniel? Team, team crazy or what? No, this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing. By the time we got to bed that night, we were pretty tired. But we were already again the next morning. Daniel's turn this morning. Of course, you've seen the footage from yesterday. So, we're going to try at least tie or beat what we got yesterday. We went to a different area. Never been there before. We'll learn right quick what's there. Right, boys? Oh, uh, yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. See how frosty it is? Windows only half clear yet. The rest is frost, so. Should be a good morning. Uh, we'll see you shortly. Okay. So this is me. Daniel's over to the right, and Danny's in the middle. Uh, we're all going three different directions and uh, try, try to cover as much ground as possible. It's a beautiful day, I guess, as you can see. So, uh, when it's all split up, we should, uh, we should step off on a nice moose. So, we'll see. This place was a beautiful area, but it just didn't seem like there was as many moose in this area as we've seen the day before when we got Danny's. But, this was the first good sized bull that I've seen, but still it wasn't big enough. Daniel's looking for something bigger, of course, but the uh, good thing he was a small one because uh, he seen me before I seen him and I spooked and then uh, he sure can put some distance between me and him in a hurry. Eventually me and Daniel met up again and we were just walking along the top of a high ridge and we happened to look way down in the valley, down toward the highway. And here was the big slab board bull, right where we come from in the morning, in the dark, we drove along a vehicle, so we couldn't we couldn't see it. So <laughs> we made plans to figure out how to get down there and see see if we can get a shot of this big bull. What do you think, Daniel? Uh, what kind of moose think he is? Uh, think he's a shooter? Yeah. He likes big. He likes big racks, do you? Oh, I do, yeah. Huh? Oh, he sees another one now. <laughs> he sees another one. It was just a cow and a calf. Yeah. This is not a real clear clip as I zoom in, but uh, there's no trouble to tell that he got a fine rack. As we were watching to see what he was going to do, a vehicle on the highway decided to stop and look at him, and we thought, oh no, someone's going to end up shooting him. 
after we've been hunting all day, looking for this big bull, and finally finds him, and now it looks like someone else is going to shoot. But uh, luck was on our side. They just drove off, and uh, we got down there before anyone showed showed up again. So now the our task began of getting down over this hill. Man, it was wicked steep. This is not what you call any normal walk in the park. We finally got to the bottom and uh, Daniel got ready with his uh, beautiful gun he got here. And we knew now all we had to do was leave and walk up this little brook for maybe three, four hundred yards. And uh, just go to our right and get a little bit of elevation and just look back down and look right down on the moose in his bed. We were a boat dressed from head to toe in fleece and uh, we knew that we just stayed on this brook that we'd be pretty quiet, you know, we walked in the water and uh, the water running over the rocks would drown out any of the noise that we made. There was no wind for the moose to smell us, so, you know, we just had this moose already killed and tagged. We just thought that's how easy it was going to be. But this moose didn't get those big antlers by being stupid. As we got close to where the moose was, when we turned right, walk upside the hill to get a little bit of elevation, I was walking along and I struck a rock with my boot and the rock rolled down the hill. But I mean, it didn't go very far at all. And when we got off high enough to look, here was the big bull was up and running away. I mean, like five, six hundred yards away from us. We just couldn't believe it. We were speechless. We had to walk an all day, covered a lot of ground, and uh, <laughs> this, then this happened. Well, right now he stopped first, but it was just too far, too far to take a chance and then cripple this moose. So we had made some other plans there, and then this moose didn't know who he was messing with. <laughs> Me and Danny and Daniel, we were going to give it that easy. We uh, made Danny into a, a beagle, I guess you'd call it. And we've seen where he last went in through the green woods. And we told Danny to go up around and try to flush the moose out. We didn't even know if the moose was there for sure. But as luck would have it, man, it couldn't work any better. Watch this. Me and Daniel sat here for hours, just hoping that Danny would make a big enough circle to flush this moose back down. And just like I said earlier, it couldn't work any better. All of a sudden, one of us seen the big white plate coming down through the woods. Hold on, you're going to like this one. Get ready, get ready. You're the man. He's, he's, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Okay. He's down, Daniel! Oh, score tomorrow. How you feel, buddy? I think he got a great bull. I think he is too. I hope so. Big boards on him, though. Oh, he got wicked, anyway. wicked boards. Yeah. Well, me feet are to do it. Where is anyway? Oh yeah, it's just waiting. <laughs> well, that was a good walk. We fell on a good many kilometers on our legs. Yeah, I guarantee you that. Yes, sir. It was worth it, I think. Yes, sir. It was worth it. Anyway, let's go across the brook. Go check out. Oh my. We're falling a cut up to him. Here comes Daniel. Come look at this biggest moose you ever killed in his life. One shot only, too. The big man with them. That sounds so good. <laughs> oh, I'm ready to stroke. Yeah, we walked for another day. Where? What? Where? You got your work. You got that right. Count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 and a half. Ooh. They're over there on top of that thing. A little bit there, yeah. What do you think? Was it worth it? Well, it was worth it. Huh? Yeah, it's good enough for me. It's 20 pounds. I'm happy with that. I'll you. Biggest one ever, right? Biggest one for me ever, sir. What do you think he spread? He looks good in the cabin. What's he spread, Daniel? Take a guess for, for the video's sake. 
Tell me. I'll, I'll give you my estimation in a second. I think he's 51, but I say 50. Dennis says 51. Anyway, that's the main thing. First thing is that tags are He was a 51 inch bull and uh, Daniel was pretty proud. And he had every right to be, of course. We only had to carry this one about 600 yards, I guess. So we uh, quartered him up and uh, took our time and lugged it to the road. Even though we uh, drove our hunting off till real late in the season, I think uh, we got two great bulls, and I'm sure uh, this is a hunt we'll, we'll never forget, sure as long as we live. <laughs>